Is it just me trying to get videos into the existence for some of these issues that I had during my pregnancy that I could not find many videos on? And this one, I really want to give advice on. And this is for the NIPT test. So in case you didn't know, I went through um, a T, um, TFMR at 22 weeks. Not fun. And I had a lot of weird things happen during my pregnancy that was awful. It was like one thing after another. But the main thing, the first thing that was a big stressor was my NIPT test and a low fetal fraction, um, which is very, very common with Natera. So the first thing I'm going to say is if you're here because you got your um, NIPT done from Natera and you got a high risk trisomy 18, trisomy 13, triploid E result because of a low fetal fraction, then this video is for you to watch 100%. Okay, so I was trying to look this up everywhere when I got, when I had this, because when you're getting the, when you get the blood done for the NIPT test, you're so excited because you're going to find out the gender and all this stuff. And it's, so you're waiting and waiting for this test. And when you get it back and it just says high risk and gives you trisomy 18, trisomy 13 and triploidy, it's stressful. It's not something anyone wants to go through. But the first thing I want to tell you is if you get that result, it doesn't mean you're going to end up having what I had happen at all. It really doesn't. So take a deep breath and know that there's a really good chance you could be fine. A really good chance you could be fine. Because Natira has these certain like flaws that happen with the test um, that are like kind of like error of needle and, and things like that. And I'm going to get all into that. So the main reason that you see on the internet when you're Googling um, NIPT, Natira, low, uh, high risk because of low fetal fraction is you see it always happens with people with a higher BMI. I have a normal BMI, okay? So it was jarring because then I just went down the rabbit hole. The thing is though is that I talked to a genetic counselor and the genetic counselor I talked to really made me feel more comfortable because she was, she explained that she gets, you know, her clients all the time <laughs> because of the low fetal fraction and most of the time, it's nothing. Most of the time, it's absolutely nothing, and it's fine, and they redraw again, and everything's good. It's just, when you get that low fetal fraction, it means that you didn't have enough, like, fetal DNA for them to test for anything. So your blood didn't get run at all, but they're just assuming that because you had a low fetal fraction, that one of these three things, trip, um, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, or triple D, are a problem because of the fact that those are common with a smaller placenta but it does not mean you have a problem. So I just want to stress that. Don't think because my situation was bad that yours will be bad because my genetic counselor saw so many of these low fetal fractions with Natira that she kind of influenced me to go in a different direction, which I wish I didn't. So basically what I want to say to you is this, is that mine was real low, like 1.9, and that was 12 weeks. But I did remember that they used a butterfly needle. And when I brought this up to my genetic counselor, she was like, yeah, butterfly needles can definitely mess up the fetal fraction, the DNA, like fragment it. And what a butterfly needle is, it's the needle that goes in, it's really thin, and it has like a, a tube. <laughs> and so like the, the nurse can like stand further away from you. So when you were getting your blood drawn, if the nurse was kind of standing off the side and not right on top of you holding out your arm, it was likely a butterfly needle. And they don't, I don't know why they even do that. She doesn't know either. She just goes... When you get it done at OB, many times we'll just use whatever needle they have. And if you confront them, they'll be like, oh, it's no big deal. But it is. How to make sure they do not use a butterfly needle. So basically, um, when I talked to her, and because I was reading so many things about Natira, I told her, I was like, I don't want to do Natira again. I want to do a different one. Because she was telling me, too, that all of her problems came from Natira. So I just, I didn't want to do that again. I wanted a different one. So I went with Maternity 21. And... I got the test two weeks later, and when I got my maternity 21 test, that was all low risk. Smooth sailing, all low risk, nothing was wrong. So I moved on and thought everything was great, and I was happy, and I continued to plan. Don't do what I did, okay? Do not do what I did, because I feel like one of the most common things that causes low fetal fraction too, if it's not just because of the needle or because it was too early, could be 
um, triploidy, and that's what my baby has is triploidy. So I'm, again, I'm not saying your baby has this, but if you want to be 100% certain that your baby is good and you can be carefree, what you should do is, again, take the Natira test again two weeks later because when you talk to your um, genetic counselor, she'll schedule you for a follow-up test like two weeks later. So what you want to do is you want to schedule it with Natira again because if you look at mine, like my, I took my first NIPT on December 7th and my fetal fraction was 1.9. The next one I took with maternity 21 was December 22nd, so almost like, you know, 20 days or something later, and it was only 5%. So clearly, there wasn't that much of a difference in fetal fraction, but maternity 21 used the straight gauge needle. So what you do is just do a repeat test with Matera and take it, you know, a two-week time and demand a straight needle. Demand a straight needle. If you get a low fetal fraction again, wait two weeks and do it. You'll still be better off than me because Matera test for triploidy. It has a different way that it tests for the um, for the chromosomes. Maternity 21 does not. So what happened with me is I went with maternity 21 because I was kind of angry that Natira, I was like literally angry with Natira. <laughs> I was angry at them. So I was like, who gives a high risk result because there's a low fetal fraction? Like you can't give me a high risk result when you even test my DNA. You're giving me anxiety for no reason. So I got mad and I didn't even want to deal with them anymore. But if I would have dealt with them, and if I would have just tested two weeks later with Natira, even if it was low fetal fraction, I would test again, it would have picked up the triploidy because maternity 21 doesn't do triploidy. So I ended up getting like a false reassurance because I did maternity 21 and they didn't test for that. And it didn't have trisomy 18, it didn't have trisomy 13, it didn't have um, Down syndrome, but it, they didn't test for triploidy. So... The best thing I can recommend you is I know getting this result is super scary. <laughs> it is. And don't think doom and gloom because a lot of the times you're fine. A lot of times this just happens. My genetic counselor was even explaining it to me like that she doesn't even look at it as a big deal anymore because she gets so many people. But then after all this was done and the diagnostics came back of what my baby had, she was like it was the biggest learning experience because she had me do maternity 21 because she figured if it was triple eight or something like that, the baby would have miscarried by now, but it didn't. And I had this rare thing where the baby just didn't miscarry. But I shrugged off Natira because I felt like it gave up this result. But in reality, once Natira does the testing, they do such a different type of testing. It's so thorough that it doesn't just do, I forget what the genetic counselor said, but she said everything else kind of looks at it like statistically, or not statistically, on a ratio basis, all the other tests, and then Natira actually does like a, like a panorama and they could actually get a better idea. So I just really recommend if you go through this, you have the low fetal fraction, stay calm, stick with Natira, do it two weeks later, demand a straight gauge needle, and then if they have at least 3% of your DNA, they'll be able to run it and test it. And then if you get everything's all clear with Natira, you're probably golden. But don't just jump around to a different test because a lot of times that low, you don't want to take the chance because that low fetal fraction could be from triploidy. And you'd rather know earlier than later, trust me. I mean, even though I was wanted such a positive result, it's so much, it would have been so much easier dealing with it earlier than later. <laughs> it would have been so much easier. Um, and so much harder having that like false reassurance. So um, that's what I recommend doing. And I know it's hard to hear it. I know that if you're, if you're Googling this right now, you're probably freaking out thinking the worst. But I can assure you that like mine was a very fluke case. I've seen many people who have a low fetal fraction and everything ends up fine. But I'm just, don't jump tests like I did. Stay with the same test because that is the most thorough test. It could have been an issue with the needle. And if you do it again with the straight gauge needle and you do it again two weeks later, it's a very good chance you'll have enough DNA to do it. And if you get a low risk then, you can take a breather. But if you jump around like I did, you're, you're just kind of like putting blinders on for one part of the test. Um, I'm not saying maternity 21 isn't, isn't good, but clearly, I mean, it missed, it doesn't, it doesn't test for triploidy. So I don't think it's as good as Natira. If I would have sticked with Natira, I could have avoided all this gloom, pain and gloom. So I really wish you weren't going through this right now if you're looking for this. But as I can say is you'll get through it. <laughs> you'll get through it. And um, 
just try not to let your anxiety rule the way that you do things with it. You know, like I know we all want answers quick and fast, um, but just be thorough. One of the best places you can go, which is where I went, is if you go to Reddit, there's an NIPT subreddit that was really great. I feel like all the people in these communities for like these pregnancy related issues are amazing. They really, really are. Um, they're so supportive and they're so kind and they're just great. So I would really go to that group. Um, I know it's like, it's when you get so stressed, you just want to hear success stories. And that's why I feel bad getting like kind of a negative downer story, but you would, I just wish I would have done that. So I want other people to do it too. Like I wish I would have just stuck with Natira and not jumped around because I would have had a more positive answer and I feel like more people get angry at Materia because of this like little algorithm thing that they have which is silly um I mean <laughs> it's not silly but I feel like it causes people to kind of like disregard them as trustworthy because they're like why does everyone get this result and they're just basically I agree with that they shouldn't have that high risk thing there because it gives people anxiety they should just say low fetal fraction test again because 90% of the time everyone's fine it's just a low fetal fraction it's that high risk reading that like stresses people out that's uncalled for. And I think that they should get rid of that. Because if you get if you can't read the test, you're gonna test again anyway. You wanna know the gender, you wanna know what's going on. But um just don't test, don't jump around. You know, I got that idea from jumping around because I saw other people doing it and I thought, yeah, screw the terror, I don't wanna be a part of terror. But it would help me out here. It would have been good for me. So I wish you the best. Um, if you have any questions you can ask. Again, I really hope it's not the case for you. I'm sure it's not. It's so quite common, so please calm down. I mean, I'm such a fluke thing. My whole pregnancy was like a fluke thing that no one understood. Even my doctors, they were just amazed by it. It was all confusing to them. But you're, you will probably be fine. But you just want to make sure. You don't want to find out in an anatomy scan that you're not okay like I did. So I wish you the best. And again, um, leave questions if you have any, and I hope this helps you. And I hope you get answers soon.